What up, cucks? It's your boy, the hater, up in this piece. And, I mean, I don't even know what to say as an intro to this. Let's just get this out of the way so the hater can go and play Black Myth Wukong, which he downloaded on his PS5. Um, one quick announcement. Um, well, two quick announcements. Number one, the hater has an Instagram. Some of you have already added me, but obviously most people don't even know that I have one. So I'm going to put a link in the description, maybe in one of the comments. We'll see, right? Join up with your boy on Instagram. I'm still getting started. I'm still getting used to it. I got a bunch of messages. I've answered some of them. I haven't gotten around to all of them. But, you know, it's going to be a learning curve because I haven't had social media in a long time. But before you know it, that hater will be just as powerful on Instagram as he is on YouTube. Now, with that being said, let's get to, to uh, this week's episode of Raw so we can move on with our lives. This was atrocious. All right. I didn't enjoy this at all it wasn't good it was really really bad it was really really boring oh wait a second i also had the other announcement one of these days i'm gonna do the second ever hater marathon mother bugs. hater marathon where i'm gonna make like 15 videos one day and there's gonna be a new video every hour you know so look forward to that i don't know when and how that's gonna work but we're gonna get it done so let's get to the to the episode of raw the show starts out with a boring ass promo by randy orton randy orton basically comes out and says hey don't expect much of me. I've never been good on the mic. But he says this by saying, it's been a while since I've done this. No, it hasn't. You cut a promo last week. What are you talking about? But I guess he meant opening Raw. So he goes out there, he says, welcome to Raw, right? Uh, basically, he says, I'm going to beat Gunter and hit him with the RKO. Gunter comes out and says, no, he won't. That's it. That's the entire segment. It's literally the same thing as last week. Gunter just comes out there to talk to Randy Orton and like doesn't attack him right away even though Randy Orton just hit the RKO on him last week for basically no reason. I mean, I know Gunther was talking a lot of smack but it's not okay to attack someone in the real world if they say words, right? Um, I know this is wrestling but still, right? Gunther has the right now to beat up Randy Orton and he does with help from Ludwig Kaiser who is basically a lackey. Like, they're supposed to be like a tag team, I guess, now because they're not a stable anymore because no, there's no more Giovanni Vinci. I don't know why because like, what was so bad about Giovanni Vinci? It's not like Ludwig Kaiser is going to do anything by himself. But anyways, it uh, doesn't matter, right? The point is, uh, Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser beat up Randy Orton. This sets up the main event of Randy Orton versus Ludwig Kaiser. This would be the equivalent of, let's say we had a feud between, um, I don't know, Batista and like Triple H, but Triple H was hanging out with a returning S.A. Rios, right? And, you know, then the main event became Batista versus S.A. Rios. That's how far apart Gunther and Ludwig are in terms of, like, the, their status, right? Like, clearly, Gunther is the number one, and Ludwig Kaiser is not a replacement for Gunther. It's not like if you're wrestling the Dudleys or the Hardys or even Edge and Christian where they're supposed to be kind of equals. Like, these people are not equals, so this is a stupid main event. Nevertheless, uh, that's what happens. Who cares? Next up, we have uh, Sheamus versus Pete Dunne. The match was decent, but the match was pretty much uh, hampered by an ongoing problem. The problem is that Sheamus is like 6'4 and built like a brick shit house, right? Whereas like, um, or is it a shit brick house? Whatever, who cares, right? Whereas Pete Dunne, the bruiserweight, it's even in his name. Like bruiserweight is obviously a pun on cruiserweight. He's a small guy, right? And he's like fighting Sheamus. Now, the one thing that I will appreciate and I always have appreciated about Pete Dunne is that he wrestles like a little guy, right? Like, it's like, if a little guy would ever beat a big guy, right, he would have to do things like pull their fingers and things like that, right? And do these, like, nasty holes and, you know, kind of like, you know, like opportunistic wrestling, right, in a wrestling match. In, in real life, you know, I'll punch the face. Like, he, he, can, he, he can floor Sheamus, but not him because he's too small, right? Um, the match, as a result, was just not believable because um, during, like, a, a good amount of the match, Sheamus was, like, getting his ass beat, right? Like, Pete Dunne was taking advantage of Sheamus. There was even moments where Pete Dunne basically, like, he kind of, like, you know, like, taunted Sheamus and, like, you know, uh, he would, like, look to the crowd and it's like, dude, like, you're a much smaller guy fighting a much bigger guy. Another point that I thought merits, um, you know, mention is Michael Cole. You know, typically Michael Cole will run down, like, the credentials of the wrestlers and he was like, Pete Dunne is a former NXT Tag Team Champion and a former NXT UK Champion. And that's all you need to know about the situation in this match, right? On one side of the coin, we've got a former NXT Tag Team Champion and an NXT UK Champion, which basically is like the most irrelevant title of all time, right? Followed by the most irrelevant tag team titles in the history of wrestling, right? Because no, promo no promotion, as far as I know, has three pairs of tag team titles, 
right? Uh, maybe like New Japan because they got like the, you know, they got a million tag team titles over there, but those don't even count. Um, and the NXT tag team titles are like the least relevant ones. So like being NXT tag team champion means absolutely nothing, right? And on the other side of the coin, we have a guy who's like, won the world title at WrestleMania. He's won the Rumble. He's won the Money in the Bank. He's won the King of the Ring. He's a multiple-time world champion, multiple-time mid-card champion, multiple-time tag team champion, guaranteed Hall of Famer, right? And this got me, gave me an idea for another uh, video that I'm going to make later. But the idea is that how is it that Sheamus has any trouble with someone like Pete Dunne? I will say one thing, though. <clears throat> one good thing that happened in this match was the finish. The finish saw Pete Dunne trapping Sheamus' arm in the turnbuckle, right? This was really cool. Not the trapping of the arm and the subsequent kicks that Pete Dunne did, but basically the match ended with Sheamus just tearing his arm out of the, of the turnbuckle and almost, almost to say like, I've had enough of this nonsense, right? So he just rips his arm out, does a bro kick and pins this jobber, right? This was a good finish, right? And th this is a rare instance where the finish might make the match substantially better. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the entire finish, right, um, kind of undercuts the match, right? The entire finish is basically like, wait a second, it's almost like a realization. Wait a second, I'm three times this guy's size. I'm gonna just kick him in the head, which is what happened, and he pinned him, right? Hopefully this ends the feud, and Pete Dunne can now focus on his NXT pursuits, because this guy, right after this match, they're like, tomorrow, it's gonna be Pete Dunne versus like two other guys, right, uh, to determine the number one contender for the NXT title. So it's like, that's where Pete Dunne belongs, you know, he's not ready for the main event, cucks. Anyways, um, the match was okay, but it is what it is. Backstage, we have a, a, a segment with uh, The New Day, dressed like The New Day, and Odyssey Jones, dressed like The New Day, right? So, honestly, Karrion Cross, who's one of the biggest jobbers of all time at this point, he's right. Clearly, Odyssey Jones is a replacement for Big E, right? There used to be three of them, now there are two, and Kofi Kingston has brought in a third, who is also a big black guy, uh, just like Big E, right? So the idea that like, oh, he must be replacing Big E is valid, right? Now, there's two forms of replacement. Like, you know, B Big E cannot be replaced like in their hearts. Like he's still their friend, no doubt about it, right? But he is being replaced, uh, you know, in terms of like, there's a third big guy that they need that they now have, right? Um, during this segment, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods have a conversation. Xavier basically says, I wish you, you would have asked me first. And he's like, look, man, you know, it's hard to break into the business, blah, blah, blah. Kofi Kingston actually does something amazing. He cuts a pretty good, like, conversation promo, right? He didn't stumble his words. You know what I mean? He basically said it. Like, you could tell from this conversation that Kofi Kingston is an intelligent man, you know? Like, clearly he's an educated guy, too, you know? So there's something there now. It's too late because Kofi Kingston is like 44. But it's like, why don't they let this guy cut promos, like serious promos, more often in his career? You know what I mean? Like, th there could have been something there. But he basically explains to Xavier Woods, like, look, bro, like, it ain't like that, right? So then we have the match. The match basically is predicated upon nothing happening until Odyssey Jones gets tagged in, right? At this point, it's becoming comical. Like, the Final Testament coming out with, like, menacing music and, like, black and white and everything. It's like, you would think that these guys are serious, but they're fucking jobbers. Like, they are horrible. It's like, they've lost to Kofi Kingston in the New Day, like, a hundred times. You know what I mean? Like, who the hell cares about this anymore, right? It's like, even Karrion Cross, if he was trying to recruit Xavier Woods, even he would stop caring. Because it's so stupid. Like, it, it's just, it was just bad, right? Basically, Odyssey Jones comes in and hits the black hole slam on Acom, whatever the hell it's called, the journey's end, right? He hits it and, and he pins them, right? And Xavier Woods is like still like, oh, I don't know about this, right? But it's been like, I don't know about this for a month. You know what I mean? Like, this is a complete waste of time. I was hoping that this would end today, but it didn't. I was hoping that the final testament would win, right? And that could end the feud. And then maybe like at least, you know, Xavier pushes Kofi Kingston away or something, right? Maybe they're going to drag this out to WrestleMania. You know, Xavier Woods versus Kofi Kingston at Mania. That would be a compelling WrestleMania match if done correctly. But if you're going to do it, you need to, like, build that up for, like, two months at most. And they can't do that because they've already started the feud now. So, like, or the, you know, the, the storyline now. So, it's like, you can't really squeeze this out until WrestleMania. There's too much time. But anyways, it is what it is. Chad Gable uh, welcomes Ivy Nile to American Maid, which is now going to be called American Jobbers. This was really, really dumb. Then we've got Ivy now versus Maxine Dupree in a feud that nobody asked for, right? The match happens, um, but it's interrupted by the Wyatt family. Now Nikki Cross attacks Ivy Nile for some reason, even though Ivy Nile's done absolutely nothing to Nikki Cross, right? Um, this was just a dumb segment, especially if you combine it with the Ivy Nile segment, right? 
Like, the Wyatt Six are not a credible threat, and they're not presented as such, right? The, the stupid-ass audience, get, they get excited with, like, darkness and a few little, like, you know, like, musical cues. And they're like, oh, this is awesome. You know, but it's like, there's nothing awesome happening at all. Like, it's like, if you, if you ask yourself, like, is this awesome if I, if I wasn't being told that it's awesome? You would not think it's awesome, right? And furthermore, the storyline is completely ruined because if the Wyatt Six are a credible threat and there's this, they are this scary entity, right? Then why the hell would Ivy Nile join the group that is like feuding with like this group, right? So like imagine, for example, if one week The Undertaker almost sacrifices Stephanie McMahon and he's, he enters into a feud with like I don't know, Ken Shamrock, right? And then Ken Shamrock's wife joins him. Why would she, right? Like, or not, not his wife, because that's his wife. But let's say like, you know, let's say, I don't know, Miss Jackie decides to join, you know, Ken Shamrock. Why? Why would she put herself in harm's way, right? Doesn't make any sense. But, you know, Maxime Dupree uh, had to be betrayed. So this is how this went down. Um, the Wyatt Six beat up the, the um, what's it called? Uh, American Maid. The Wyatt Six is, in my opinion, dead in the water. These guys, like, they've had one match in, like, three months. But whatever, who cares? Then uh, we're told, once again, they're really trying to get this over, that Rhea Ripley and uh, Damian Priest are called the Terror Twins. They don't look anything alike, right? It's fucking stupid. It's a stupid name. Just call them the Terror Duo. But anyways, whatever. Then we have a stupid-ass in-ring segment with CM Punk. CM Punk comes out, and he embarrasses himself even more than usual. CM Punk is not good on the mic, and if you ever thought he was, go watch this promo because it'll show that CM Punk is garbage on the mic, right? He's not charismatic, he's not interesting, he's not good at talking, right? He's good at reading a script maybe, but that's about it. So in this, in this stupid-ass promo, he comes out with a bunch of, uh, you know, French bracelets, whatever the hell they're called, right? And he's like, the fans made these for me. This woman flew from Thailand. To, to take a picture with me. Like, I don't give a flying fuck. What is this? We get it. You're famous. People like you. You know what I mean? Ha ha. How great is that, right? He even says that I am uh, Taylor Swift for guys. No, he isn't. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what the hell that means. But no, he isn't. First of all, like, I don't even, like, if you put a gun to my head and you're like, tell me five Taylor Swift song, songs I couldn't tell you because I'm a fucking grown man. But anyways, that's not here nor there. If you're as Swifty as they call them, be my guest. But basically, CM Punk just took the role of being a fucking loser uh, in this promo, and he basically said, I'm a I'm Taylor Swift for men, which basically implies that he is a commercialistic, um, you know, whore, basically, right? Not that Taylor Swift's a whore, but in the sense that she controls her own narrative and she has that kind of stuff, and CM Punk doesn't. But basically, Taylor Swift and any pop star that makes it that big is some sort of commercialized whore in the sense that, like, you know, you're, you, you just are something else. Like, Taylor Swift is not a real person. She's a character. Just like Kanye and just like CM Punk, right? At the very end of the circle jerk, Drew McIntyre comes out and they almost, this, this was really, really, really bad, right? CM Punk says, why do we have to wait till Berlin? Let's have a strap match now or whatever, right? Because they're going to have a strap match. Drew McIntyre says, no, put the strap down and I'll come fight you, right? And CM Punk says, how about I don't put the strap down and you give me the bracelet? Well, this is some fucking stupid shit. Oh, you give me the strap, I'll give you the bracelet. What if you trade shoelaces for a penny? Like, shut the fuck up. You know, just shut the fuck up. Like, honestly, this was really, really bad. Everyone there was just embarrassed, probably. And basically, they, they don't have the match. They don't have the physical confrontation that they promised they would have, right? Drew McIntyre comes out, he's like, we don't have to wait. And CM Punk's like, you're right, we don't. Let's do it. And then, for no reason, they don't do it, right? Nothing happens. They're like, ah, we're not going to do it, actually. Right? And it pretty much came down to, like, Drew McIntyre being like, Put the strap down because I'm really going to hit me with it if I come in the ring. CM Punk's like, no. He's like, okay, then I'm not going to fight you. This is the feud, motherfucks. This is the feud. This plus some, some stupid little, uh, you know, bracelet with AJ Lee's name on it. Fuck AJ Lee. Fuck Larry. You know what I'm saying? Fuck everybody. Like, this was just a stupid ass pro uh, promo. Everyone here sucked. Uh, the whole thing was just boring as shit, right? Then at the very end, CM Punk says this. He says, remember, Drew. Like, and I, you can't make this shit up. And you tell me that CM Punk is good on the mic. He says, it's not me that's attached to you. It's you. And then he hesitates because he, he probably forgot what he was going to say. It's not me that's attached to you. It's you that's attached to me. It's the fucking same thing, you fucking moron. This is the kind of stuff that people probably thought, wow, what a line. Because nobody thought it through. 
the, the idea is you say this in a specific context, right? A great example is actually a resting example. There was a time when Jericho came in on like a shark cage, you know, those cages that you, you go into the water with to like look at sharks uh, in the middle of the ring against Shamrock. And he was in the cage and he's like, Shamrock, this cage is not here to protect uh, me from you. It's here to protect you from me, right? That, that's how you use it. The, the idea being like, like if you have a bodyguard, you say, they're not, here, they're not here to protect me from the world. They're here to protect the world from me. But an attachment goes both ways. You fucking idiot. This is how stupid CM Punk is, right? Like compare this to like Kofi Kingston, for example, earlier today, who was articulate and made his points. Boom, 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 one, two, three. CM Punk, you're not attached to me. I'm attached to you. Why don't they both attach the strap into their own asses and have a st ass strap match? This was garbage. CM Punk is shit and CM Punk needs to be released. This guy sucks. He's, he was never good. He was never a draw. Nobody ever gave a flying fuck about CM Punk. This guy just talked his way to the top, which really shows how bad wrestling is because if, if CM Punk was around in the Attitude Era, people were like, he would be a main eventer. CM Punk wouldn't be on heat, motherfucks. He wouldn't be on heat. Like he would be feuding with Steve Blackman who would legit beat his ass, right? Just to prove a point that like wrestling is not for like pansy ass motherfuckers like CM Punk. Anyways, I digress. Enough of that, of that stupid ass moment. Um, what do we have next up in this bitch? Uh, we had uh, a no DQ match between The Miz and Bronson Reed. For what this was, this was pretty good. Basically, the match ends when Bronson Reed does a Death Valley driver onto a table in the corner. Uh, he also slammed, I think, like he powerbombed, I don't remember. He slammed Miz through like a, a trash can, right? And that was pretty cool. Um, I don't like seeing The Miz lose like this because The Miz is just too good for this. And at the end of the day, like in three years, let's say, who's gonna be higher up on the card? Miz or Bronson Reed? Probably Miz, you know? This is gonna be completely meaningless. This is just like, it's just like when they like, you know, The Miz, here's why The Miz is so great. Because there's so many people that come and go, and a lot of them go through The Miz, right? And some of them beat The Miz, and then before you know it, like you, you, you'll, you'll find them like nowhere, you'll find them nowhere. They won't even be in the company anymore, or they'll be like, you know, on the pre-show, like doing analysis with Jerry Lawler, you know what I mean? Like, like, like a good example would be Wade Barrett. Like, Miz and Wade Barrett had so many feuds, and half the time, Wade Barrett came out on top, and people were like, Wade Barrett's the future. But people like me, I knew, I knew, I'm like, no, he's not. The Miz is gonna outlast Wade Barrett. The Miz is gonna outlast Ziggler. The Miz is gonna outlast Morrison. The Miz is gonna outlast nearly everybody that he's been in the ring with, you know? But it is what it is. Right now, it's Bronson Reed's time, and I can't say I don't like it. I like Bronson Reed. I like his whole uh, finisher, because um, I basically, when I noticed, that it's not like a, top, like a top rope splash. It's like he climbs it halfway, then he just kind of like uses one foot to like spring off the, the top rope. It's a very unique little twist, a tsunami. Uh, Braun Strowman comes out to stop him and uh, Bronson Reed backs off. I would have liked to see Bronson Reed just destroy Braun Strowman. That would have been sick, because it's gonna happen anyways, right? Braun Strowman is now entering his great Kali jobber phase. Like Bronson Reed is gonna come, come ahead of, of, of Braun Strowman. Right? He's going to. So why not just do that today? You know, just he, he basically goes up, they have a like like a stare down. They have like a one minute, you know, stare down and like a 10 second exchange, which ends with Bronson Reed flattening him and hitting like seven tsunamis on him. Just to show that nobody is safe, right? That would have paid dividends. But why do that when you can just have them back up from each other, right? That's just how wrestling is nowadays, cucks. Also, I was thinking during this match, even before uh, Braun Strowman came out, what's with these dumbass names? Bronson? Okay, Bronson at least is a name, right? Bronson is an actual name. But then you have Braun Strowman, spelled B-R-A-U-N. Then you have Braun Breaker, B-R-O-N. Nobody's named B-R-O-N, except for LeBron, obviously, but there's a L, you know, before that, motherfucks. So it's like, what kind of a dumbass name is Braun? Especially Braun Breaker, like, it's so stupid. Speaking of Braun Breaker, he had a little uh, segment. This was horrible, right? See, I love Braun Breaker, but I gotta say it like it is. The segment was stupid. First of all, Braun Breaker starts by saying, I'm happy that I went to a highly educated university. Okay, that's a stupid sentence. A university cannot be educated. Only people can be educated. He, he, he meant to say, it's great that, I've, that I went to a prestigious, uh, high level university. But he didn't say that, he said what he said. Then, that clause, that independent clause of him going to a prestigious university had no bearing on the next sentence that he said. Because the next sentence was, because I hear, that Adam Pierce is having a, a number one contenders tournament for the IC title. What? What is you going to a good university? What, what is the connection, motherfucks? 
the fact that he went to a good university has no bearing on whether he figured out or didn't figure out that there's a tournament because someone just told him. And he's like, ah, oh, it's good. Like, just, just imagine how stupid this is, right? Like, I understand he fucked up his lines, but still, you know, you can, you can film these beforehand. You don't have to film these live, which that's the only explanation. It must have been filmed live. But imagine this. Imagine someone comes up and says, hey, you know that title that you have? We're going to do a tournament to uh, decide who's going to be your next challenger. And then you say, huh, oh, you are? Thank God. Thank God that I went to a good university because now I can make heads and tails out of this. What the fuck? This was really stupid. Then Braun Breaker basically says it doesn't matter. I'm going to kick their ass, which I did like to see. Now, it would have been great if Braun Breaker also had a match and kicked someone's ass. It could have been a low-level jobber like Ilya Dragunov for all I care. I don't care. Just have him go out there and do like a two-minute squash match instead of having a commercial about like peanut butter or some bullshit. Next up, we have Damien Priest versus Dominic Mysterio. This to me was the segment of the night because this was obviously a clear ambush. That's how it went down. It was really dumb. Basically, um, Damien Priest goes and tries to beat up the entire Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley tries to do the riptide on Dominic. She gets hit with a chair on the back from Liv Morgan who beats her ass, hits the oblivion in the ring while the male members of Judgment Day beat up Damien Priest. Carlito hits the backstabber, he gets a coup de gras, and he gets a frog splash from Dirty Dom. Um, clearly, the numbers game, you know, played out as it will play out, right? So they need more allies, but whatever, right? Then we have a throwaway match, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn versus Damage Control and the Pure Fusion Collective, which is one of the dumbest names of all time. I don't even know what that means. Maybe it's a fusion between mo mixed martial arts, boxing, and like grappling. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? But anyways, uh, this match happened and the finish of this match was just atrocious. Basically, uh, Shayna Baszler puts the Kirifuda clutch on one of the Japanese girls. I forget which one. I think it was uh, Kairi Sane. That's one of them, right? Yeah, Kyrie Sane. I think it was on Kyrie, right? Then uh, one of the Isla Dawn uh, and the other one girls does a backstabber. I think Isla Dawn is the one. She does a backstabber on Shayna, who is still holding fucking, what's her face? Kyrie Sane. Now she holds her in the backbreaker while Shayna holds the other girl in the Kirifuda clutch. And uh, Alba Fire does like one of the worst swanton bombs of all time, right? She does it and hits Kyrie Sane. Then they pin Shayna Baszler. Like, Kyrie Sane should have been like a shield because she took the brunt of the impact. All she and the base had to do was take a small, low, low impact backstabber, right? And that's all it took. So, you know, it is what it is. What can you say, right? Then we had Randy Orton versus Ludwig Kaiser. The match was really, really boring. Um, Randy Orton is just, I don't think he gives a shit anymore. So, like, basically the match, um, it was just, it, it, to, to be fair, the match itself was whatever. It was boring because... Obviously, there's no way that Ludwig Kaiser is going to beat Orton, right? How great would it have been if he did? Like, imagine if he just beat him clean, right? You know, like, that's what we need in wrestling. We need some more surprises. But anyways, that's not what we got. What we got instead, cuckolds, is exactly what I just said. Basically, obviously, Randy Orton won. He hit the vintage Orton. Then he got ready for the RKO. And I was like, oh, my God, it's going to... There was, like, one minute left of the show. So I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to work for the first time ever. Now... Ludwig Kaiser turns it into a roll-up, and then uh, Randy Orton kicks out, then hits the RKO. So that was a, a nice little, like, I, it got me. I was like, oh, is this the first time ever where Randy Orton does the vintage RKO, the vintage Randy Orton, and then successfully follows up with the RKO? Like, Orton doesn't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, like you know the little taunt that Orton does where he, like, gets on, on his, like, belly, and he starts pounding the ground to get ready for the RKO? Like, that never works. You know what I mean? That, like, I don't think it's ever worked once where he does that. The guy turns around and gets RKO'd. Like, it never works, right? Uh, but anyways, um, that's, that was Raw this week. It wasn't good. It was very boring. It was very bad. I didn't enjoy it at all. Nobody possibly could have enjoyed this shit. And with that being said, cucks, take care of yourselves.